In the last video, we found the expression for the lowest stationary state, the Zeinon. And then we can pretty much guess that the nth stationary state is given by applying the a plus operator n times to Zeinon. And then in order to normalize this, we're going to have to multiply this with a constant a n. So now let's focus on how to how we can find this constant over here. So you can pretty much expect that if we apply this positive operator to xi n, we're going to get an expression like this. So if you apply this initially, it's uh, you're going to get a result that is pretty similar to xi n plus 1, but it's not going to be normalized. So in order to establish this equality, you need to multiply it by this constant over here. And so the same thing applies for, for uh, the minus operator as well. So if I apply the minus operator to xi n, I'm going, to I'm going to get some constant multiplied by xi n minus 1. So I'm going to shift our focus to finding these two constants over here. Once we found cn and dn, we can use it to deduce what a n should be. And before we can find these two constants, we're going to have to, have to prove something else. So I'm going to have to establish this result first. So we have the conjugate of f, so the star represents a conjugate. So if we have this integral here, I'm going to have to prove that uh, this relationship is true. And uh, after I prove this relationship, so after I establish this equality, this will allow me to deduce what C and D should be, and which would in turn allow us to find what A and should be. So in this video, I'm going to focus on trying to deduce, uh, trying to prove this relationship over here. So starting with the left-hand side, we have uh, f conjugate multiplied by a plus minus applied to g. And then we call the definition of the a plus minus operator is equal to minus plus times i p plus m omega x. And then p is just each bar divided by i d t x. So I can just get rid of the i over here. So this gives us this expression over here. So negative infinity to infinity, conjugate of f. So, uh, <clears throat> so I pull these constants out, and then in the end we have minus plus h bar dg dx plus m omega x g dx. So you can see that within this integral that we have over here, we have this expression in the middle. So we have this expression over here inside this integrand. So uh, we're going to have to find a way to try to manipulate this into something else that would help us uh, to arrive at this result over here. So I'm going to use integration by parts. So trying to integrate this, I can use integration by parts. So I, I take the integral of this term over here, so it becomes g. And then in this integral, I'm going to assume that f and g are both normalizable. So these are functions that you would expect to be uh, that could be wave functions. So uh, because these are normalizable at infinity and negative infinity, these are going to be evaluated down to zero because otherwise they would not be normalizable. So this entire term here is going to be equal to zero. And then we minus the integral, and then now we differentiate this term. So we have df star dx times dx. And because this whole term is zero, we get this expression over here. So there we have it. So using this, we can, this is going to help us with our proof. So I'm going to, so moving on with the expression that we had before. So we had this integral from negative infinity to infinity. And then notice that inside this integral, we had exactly what we were dealing with before. So this f star times dg dx, this is exactly this term over here. So you see why I did this proof over here now. And then we have m omega x, the conjugate of f times g dx. And then now I'm going to substitute the result that we had before directly. So this term over here is going to become negative g times df dx. So because of the negative sign, this becomes plus minus. And this, this becomes g df dx plus m omega x f g dx. And then continuing, I'm 
going to pull out some terms over here. So I have plus minus h df dx plus m omega x f I'm going to, and I'm going to pull the g out. And because this is just a normal multiplication, it's perfectly fine to pull it to pull it out on the right hand side. So uh, as you can see, I can pretty much uh, at this point. Uh, the way how a conjugate works, I can actually pull the conjugate sign out of the bracket over here as well. So this is perfectly valid as well. And as you can see, this inner expression over here, and uh, uh, the way this conjugate uh, op uh, operator works, I can also put these constants inside this uh, this bracket over here. And this essentially just becomes. So if you put this these constants over here on the inside, this entire term just becomes a minus plus f star g dx. And so there we have it. This is the result that we were trying to prove. So we were starting off with this expression here, and we arrived at this expression here, which exact is exactly what we wanted to find. And then using this equality over here, we can later on try to deduce what these constants should be.